Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 17. Let's go to the word of God quickly. And then right after that, I want to read, if you'll go with me, Joshua, straight from Nehemiah to Deuteronomy 6, verse 1. Then I said to them, do you see the distress that we are in? How Jerusalem lies waste and its gates are burned with fire. Come, let us build the wall of Jerusalem that we may no longer be a reproach. Last week, we laid the foundation for this series on Nehemiah. That we know that Israel had gone into captivity and the walls had been broken down around Jerusalem and Nehemiah went and he evaluated the walls and he wept when he saw the condition of these broken down walls. Verse 18. And I told them of the hand of my God, which had been good upon me, and also of the king's words that he had spoken to me. So they said, let us rise up and build. And they set their hands to this good work. But when Sanballat, the Hornite, Tobiah the Ammonite official and Geshem the Arab heard of it. They laughed at us and despised us and said, what is this thing that you are doing? Will you rebel against the king? And so I answered and said to them, the God of heaven himself will prosper us. Therefore, his servants will arise and build but you have no heritage or right or memorial in Jerusalem. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 1. You got it? Yeah. Now this is a commandment, that thee, and these are the statutes and judgments which the Lord your God has commanded to teach you, that you may observe them in the land which you are crossing over to possess. That you may fear the Lord your God and keep his statutes and his commandments, which I command you, you and your sons and your grandsons, all the days of your life, and that your days may be prolonged. Therefore, hear, O Israel, and be careful to observe. Can you say careful to observe? Say careful to observe. That it may be well with you and that you might multiply greatly as the Lord your God of your fathers has promised you a land flowing with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord their God is one God. And you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your strength. And these words which I command you today shall be on your heart. And you shall teach them diligently to your children. And you shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way. And when you lie down and when you rise up. And you shall bind them as a sign on your hand. And they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. And you shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Father, I pray that you will help me this morning to be concise. You know, protection is a major issue in our nation. Our prime minister has built a massive wall around his house to try and protect him and his family. What happens when he leaves behind the wall? Germany built a massive wall to protect itself Meaning, Germany, the good side, built a wall to protect itself against Nazi Germany. But one day the wall came down. Trump wanted to build a wall between America and Mexico. Walls are not ancient things of the past. Nearly every one of us have a wall or a fence or a barrier around our house. People in Jamaica make a living from making burglar bars. Window panes are not enough. Nearly every Jamaican, no matter where you live, you can have a house made of wood 
but you have iron on your window. Not true? You can have a zinc roof. But on the windows, you have burglar bars. We don't think that somebody can just cut the zinc on the roof and come down. But we bar up our windows and we bar up our doors and we lock up our windows and we lock up our doors. Why? We're trying to protect ourselves. And so we live in a nation where protection is a major thing. Being safe is a major thing. Keeping ourselves safe is a major thing. But the reality is we have to come out from behind our walls. We have to come out from behind our bars and we have to do life. Walls and burglar bars serve a function that is necessary and that is valid. And when we're looking at the book of Nehemiah, we know that part of the function of walls is to keep what is not supposed to be on the inside out. And the other function of the wall is to protect what is on the inside. Now, if there's nothing on the inside of your house, what is there to protect? If there is nothing of value, there's no need for a wall. Meaning, if a house is empty and there's no furniture in the house, and there's nothing in the house but, but, but what? Cobwebs. You don't need to protect anything. So the issue is that the enemy is after the walls of our life not because of the wall itself because there's something on the inside of us that is of value there's something on the inside of us that is a threat to his kingdom there's something on the inside of us that can bring the enemy down Now, every one of us, and I want to make it simple this morning. We know what it is like when we have a wall in our life that's broken down. You ever had a wall broken down in your life? Meaning, what what are some of the symptoms when a wall is broken down in your life? You feel vulnerable to the enemy. You don't feel safe. You feel that your money is under attack. You feel your mind is under your attack. You feel your emotions are under attack. You feel your relationships are under attack. You ever been in a situation where nothing is ever going right in your life? You turn to the right and there's trouble. You turn to the left and there's trouble. You turn to the the other side and there's trouble. And you say, God, what is going on in my life? I fix this and then this gets broken. I fix that and then that gets broken. I don't know about you, but I've been through seasons in my life where I have felt like my spiritual walls have been broken down. I felt vulnerable. I felt under attack. I said, God, what is going on? Now, what happens when our walls get broken down spiritually? We praise God, but something don't feel right in our prayer. When our walls get broken down spiritually, we pray, but we don't feel like our prayer is effective. When our walls get broken down spiritually, we give, but our giving is not producing. Anybody know what I mean? When our walls get broken down spiritually, we find that it's hard to bless those that curse us, to pray for those that despitefully use us. We find it's hard to forgive those that have wounded us. When our walls get broken down spiritually, there's an internal battle that we feel that we cannot resolve. Does anybody know what I'm talking about this morning? As we go through this series of Nehemiah, it's important this this morning's message is absolutely critical. One point that is so key that it has a capacity to revolutionize our walk with God. You see, when David numbered the people, 
And he took a census of the people against God's instruction. His walls were broken down. When the prodigal left his father's house and asked for his inheritance early, he ended up eating with his pigs. His walls were broken down. Have we ever eaten with pigs when we're supposed to be in the palace? I began to think about examples in scripture of when walls were broken down. David, you know, you have to love David. I don't know about you, David is one of my favorite characters in scripture. I mean, you see his triumphs and you see his strength and you see his failures. And here was David in all of his passion. He decides to restore the ark to Jerusalem and he puts it on the back of oxen instead of on the back of the priest. And what happens? Uzzah gets killed. David, this king that was in an awesome procession to restore something that was good. God disciplined him in front of the nation. His walls were broken down. I began to think about when Israel made the golden calf. No, Pastor Mary, I don't have any golden calves in my life. Meaning anything that we put above God is a golden calf. When Israel said, we can't wait. You ever been impatient for a promise? You've ever, ever been impatient for God to do what he's promised you to do? So you start to take matters into your own hands? That's what Israel did. And God says, because he made a calf of idolatry, their walls got broken down. Broken down. Samson, Samson. Because he didn't keep the natural keep out. His walls, his walls. Broken, broken. David, the Bathsheba, the Bathsheba. to the enemy. What the enemy is after is what's in the wall. What's behind the wall. So I was praying and I was seeking God this week and meditating and reading on Nehemiah. And you start to think about things. You say, God, what are the walls in our life that protect us? How do we have protection in a generation like what we're living in? How many of you want protection? Do you realize that our house can't protect us? Do you realize that our burglar bars can't protect us? Do you realize that our money can't protect us? Do you realize that our friends cannot protect us? Do you realize that our family, oh yeah, come on, let's talk for a minute. Can your husband really protect you? No. Can your wife protect you? No. Can your family protect you? No. How can my money protect me? Come on, talk to me in this morning. But how many of us want to be protected? Nobody. All right, may I go home? I gone home. How many of us desire that when things happen in the nation that we're protected? How many of us desire that there's if there's a hurricane, our house is not the house that blows down? All right, I, I, I can tell. I gotta warm you guys up. No, I don't have a church this morning. How many of you desire that if you're in the midst of a place where bullets fly, you don't get shot? How many of you desire that if you do investments, God tells you where to invest your money so that if there's a global economic shaking, you're able to survive and to help others in a time of shaking? Well, I don't have a church in here this morning. Y'all are so holy, you don't want protection. I don't know about you, I want protection. I want God to protect my life. Not just my physical life, my spiritual life, my mental life, my emotional life. I, he says, thou, O oh God, art a shield around about me, the glory and the lift of my head. Meaning, just quiet. 
I want to be in a place that no matter how witches and warlocks curse me. No undeserved curse can come to rest. I want to be in a place where I don't have to worry about anybody that wants to curse me. A thousand may fall at my side and ten. Say immune. Full immunity. Immunity of the blood of Jesus. Immunity of the word of God. Immunity from tongues that are wicked. Immunity from hearts that are evil. Immunity. The Bible says he restores the things of the canker worm. You know, when you're walking in immunity that God gives you, you are safe. All right, I want you to work with me. Now let's go back to that. How many of you want protection? I want God to protect my joy. Because the joy of the Lord is my strength. All right, come on, go. I want God to protect my peace. Because he, pee, he gives us peace that passes all understanding. It means in the midst of the storm, I can sleep. I want God to protect my money. Consider the lilies of the field. Consider the sparrows of the air. I want God to protect my health. With long life, he will satisfy me and show me his salvation. I want God to protect my child. That the seed of the righteous shall be... Do you really want protection? Yeah. You see, when we realize that we cannot protect ourselves, you know, you can carry one gun, any gun man, and listen to this, and you think the gun can protect you, and they can come upon you unannounced and overtake you. Spiritual protection is protection that is necessary. So during this week, I'm thinking about Nehemiah. And I'm thinking about walls. And I'm wanting to get to next week. And I said, Pat, you know, I want to get to next week. I don't really want to preach this week because I'm excited to get about the topic of the opposition to rebuilding. And I'm bringing tongues and I'm seeking God. And he begins to say, Mary, the wall, the wall, the enemy's not after the wall. So I'm working and I'm reading scripture and I say, what are the walls around our life? And I begin to think, yeah, man, the word of God is one of the walls around our life. And, you know, I start to dig in scripture and then I say, praise is a wall. You know, the Bible says, let the high praises of God be upon our mouth like a double-edged sword in a hand. And then I think prayer is a wall. And then, you know, prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And then I think holiness is a wall, you know. It says, without holiness, no man shall see God. And then I think the fear of the Lord is a wall. Amen. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And I'm before the Lord. And yesterday morning, I get up early. Start to go in the, the scripture. You know, think about Israel. They were a bunch of slaves with no military might, no military power. They lived in an area where they were absolutely surrounded. By the enemy. We are living in a day. The battle is hotter. Than it has ever been before. 
But our God is bigger than any and every battle. And our God is mightier. And the hotter the battle, the sweeter, we know the, the sweeter the victory. But when the enemy rages, the Bible says when the enemy comes in, I like to put a comma right there. Like a flood, the Spirit of God will lift up a standard. All right. Israel. Israel. They were a bunch of slaves. They had been delivered from Pharaoh. They had no weapons, guys. No weapons. They had no bow and arrow. They had no sword. They were wilderness wanderers bargaining with God and shaking their fists at heaven because they didn't want manna and quail. They were disobedient. They were disgruntled. They were discouraged. But God had a promised land for them. Guys, our promised land is not on the other side of life. Okay, I'm going to say that again. You see, many of us think our promised land is when we die. When we die is when we rule and reign with him. But our promised land is here. He says all of the promises of God are yes and amen through Christ Jesus. Meaning it is here and now. God wants to show us his provision. It's here and now. God wants to show us supernatural healing. It's here and now. God wants to show us supernatural protection. Would you say my promised land is here on this side of heaven but Israel was so used to manna and to quail they were used to bread and sardine nothing wrong with bread and sardines but God had something more for them I don't know about anybody in this church, but until the day that God decides to take me home, I am going to contend for everything Jesus Christ won for me and for my child and for my family and for you guys and for your families and for your children and for your children's children and every member of TCMI I'm going to contend for a church and for a people that apprehend the victory of God so Israel was this group of wilderness wanderers and they, they had no power. They had no weapons. And there were giants in the land. Oh, give, me, give me a moment. Can you imagine if Joshua and Moses called all of the Israelite army and said, you know what, guys? We're going to take these giants. So everybody hit the ground. Pastor Mark, Pastor Rockcliffe, hit the ground. Push-ups. Come on, let's go. Come on, Training. All right, come Sean, training over here. Oh, come Roy, all of the men. Come, train, come Pastor Chris. Where are the men in here? Come Andrew, you're, you're fit. Yes, yeah, suppose Joshua said, all right, ready, one, two, three. Come on, come on. Where are the men? Come men, four. Come men, five, <laughs> six. What happened, Mr. Esty? Seven. All right, stand up, stand up, men. All right, jumping jacks, jumping jacks. All right. Come on, cheer them on. We're building an army. We're going to fight the giants. We got to take down the Philistines. All right, stop, stop. All right, flex your muscle. Come on, show them. How are they... This is our frontline men. Andre, what happened to you? You know what? Come up here. Where's our military man? 
Good to see you back in church. All right, come, give them a little training. Come, just, just 60 seconds. Come, 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 give him a mic. Can you imagine, listen to this, if Joshua and Moses, all right, took the frontline men, cheer them on, everybody, cheer them on. They got to fight some giants. There's some Philistines out there. Get them, can they, listen, do you think they can defeat the Philistines? Absolutely, absolutely. You think they can? Uh, we are going to defeat Let me see your muscles, today. Andre. Uh, <laughs> All right. <laughs> Pastor Chris. Yes, Mr. Esty. Yes, Pastor Rockcliffe. Good at Pastor Mark. Come on, let them show their muscles. You think they can take on the Philistines? All right, let me see. Uh, where's Andrew? Somebody take over Andrew's camera from him. Joey, come get on the camera. You know, you think they have the taekwondo to take on the Philistines? All right, let's see. 60 seconds of training. Okay, then, let's go, let's go. We're going to go down for push-up now. We're going to go down for push-up. Uh, all, all this summer, demonstrate to them. Young men, what happened to the youth? Come youth, on Africa to war too. Come youth. All of the youth, come my son, all of the youth, the youth, come Dennis, where are the youth, come Nick, come on, these, these are our frontliners, cheer them on TCMI, they're going to take on the Philistine, oh yeah, yeah, Kotobo, shut up, come on, pray for them, give the trainer a mic, give him a mic, Get me a mic. Up. Down. Up. Down. Up. Down. Up. Down. Up. Up. Down. Up. Down. Up. Up. <laughs> No, no, no. Are they ready? You're, you're Joshua. Yes, yes. You're Joshua. Are they ready to come on? Get up here. Where are the men? Come on, face the congregation. Face the congregation. Who? Oh. Rockcliffe is calling for backup with Barry. Barry, you're called to war. Come here. Trust me, I'm going somewhere with this. Come on, Barry, you're called to war. Who? Glenn. Glenn, they need your help. Glenn, they're calling for your help. Show them your muscles, Glenn. Yeah, man, Glenn. Glenn can take on a couple of Philistines, right? All right, men. Get in your posture to fight. Get in your fighting posture. All right, you ready? Come. You ready? All right. Now these men have to defeat all of you. Who is going to win? Are the men going to win or are you guys going to win? Come on, let's go. Who's going to win? Who's going to win? Are the men going to win or are you guys going to win? Who's going to win? Who's going to win? Who's going to win? Where are the Philistines? Who's going to win? All right, stop. Stop. Can I tell you the truth? Stay right here. Can I stand on this? If we had a real fight, these men are simply outnumbered. Put 
put your hands to them. No, stretch forth your hands. Say, we love you. Thank you for training. But we want to tell the truth to you. You're simply... You did a great job. Robert. But the reality is they're outnumbered. How do we win in a world where we're A world that is doing everything to weaken us. How do we win in a world that has a higher power weaponry in the natural than we do? account is not enough. Oh well, the Bible said, thanks be unto God, who always causes us to keep doing your push-ups. You see, the thing about the kingdom of God, you don't win in the kingdom with natural weapons. If we try to use natural weapons against the enemy, we can't win. All right, now, second example, then I'll make the point by the grace of God. Nick, show me your best kid. Show me a basket. All right. Somebody give me $500. Somebody give me, just give me some props. Come in. Show, show me a kick. All right. Stand right there. Where's your wife? There's your wife. Stand up. He has a beautiful wife. You have an amazing husband. God's hand is on his life. But I'm going to do something. All right. What's your name, sir? Devin, Mr. Baldy. Stand up there. Show me your best punch. It's pretty good, right? Pastor Mark, what you going to do? Your best shout? Sure. What you gonna do? Show me your best jumping jack. All right. Now, I want Stephanie, can you come up here? Put your hands on Nick's shoulder. Somebody give me a thousand dollars, I'll give it back. Pull this out. Pastor Mark, put this behind your back. Dennis, I'm going to give you an open bottle of water. I'm going to work with you straight. Hold his shoulder. Put your hands on both shoulders. Okay, you're married to Barry too, and I know that you love Barry, and Barry loves him. But I want to make a point. The word of God is a weapon against the enemy. The Bible says the word of God is like living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword. Ephesians tells us to close ourselves in the whole armor of God. 
The first piece of the armor is to put on the belt of truth, which is the word of God. The second piece is to put on the breastplate of righteousness, meaning that we live before God righteously. He said, shod our feet with the preparation, the shoes of peace, the helmet of salvation, meaning right thinking. The Bible tells us the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Okay, so look at this. God has given us weapons. Our giving is a weapon. My praise is a weapon. My worship is a weapon. Prayer is a weapon. What is it that brings down the enemy? The word, obedience, prayer, worship, praise, holiness, so righteousness. Our weapons are not in the realm of the natural. So Stephanie, this last week, I'm like thinking about this wall and thinking about how so many times walls get broken down in our life. Meaning, we feel vulnerable to the attacks of the enemy. And my mind is thinking, well, we rebuild the wall of the word. You know, quote the word, speak the word, declare the word, memorize the word. Valid? Yeah. Rebuild the wall of prayer. Intercede, pray, get up early. Valid? Yes. Rebuild the wall of holiness. Valid? Yes. Rebuild the wall of worship. Valid? Yes. Rebuild the wall of reading the word. So I began to study Nehemiah. So here's the second illustration. How does the word work as a weapon If you are compromised in your life. You see, the reality, the word of God is a threat to the enemy. Prayer is a threat to the enemy. Praise is a threat to the enemy. Fellowship is a threat to the enemy. My giving is a threat to the enemy. But these weapons that God has given us, they cannot work. Think of Samson. Our weapons do not work without one ingredient. So what is in our life that the enemy is after are the weapons that can defeat him. So the enemy wants to steal from us the word of God. He wants to steal from us the promises of God. He wants to steal from us our worship. He wants to steal from us our fellowship. He wants to take our consecration. Anything that he can do to get us to compromise. Anything, you know, I was thinking about it and I say, God, this is how some of us as Christians think. This is how much the enemy has lied. Well, if I put water in my gas tank and pray over it, the car should work. I don't have much longer left. Think about it. We, it is ludicrous to say that I can put water in my gas tank and because water looks like liquid, it must work. A car was made for gas. A car was designed for gas. And if you put the wrong ingredient in it, the car is not going to work. Amen, 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 amen. If we want protection in our life, protection in our finances, protection in our health, 
protection over our marriages. Yeah, I want, I want a good marriage. I want my child to be righteous. I want health in my body. We cannot quote the word. Barry, can you just go between Stephanie and Nick? No. Now, Stephanie, put your arms around your husband's neck. And Barry, go up. And then, Stephanie, put your arms on Nick's neck. You can't quote the word and be in bed with the devil. <laughs> Lift up your money. You can't ask God for protection of your finances. You see, many of us say, God, I will bless you by what I give. And we think we're blessing God who owns a cattle on a thousand hills and needs nothing by tipping him by what we give. So we say to God, God, hold up the money. Say, Lord, I'm going to bless you with my giving. I'm going to bless you with my giving. Amen. I'm going to bless you with my giving. He never told us to bless him with his giving. Our giving. Amen, amen, amen. What did he tell us to do? No, he didn't tell us just to give. What did he tell us to do? Bring the whole time. Pastor Mark, you know the word. No, I'm not here to get anybody's money. But God... You see, we say to God, protect my finances in the season ahead. Protect me from the things that are coming down the pipeline. But we say, God, it's, it's my honor to bless you. So we put water in the gas tank of our giving and expect our finances to work. Then we say, God, bless my marriage. Come, pay some me, mom. Pay the people, man. God, bless my marriage. God, bless my marriage. <laughs> Let us be unified in a love forever. <laughs> Let us be unified in your love forever. <laughs> but then, as a man, we never wash our wife Amen. with the word. Or as a woman, we don't submit. Or as a man, we use submission as a weapon. And then we say, why is this car not working? Why is she not deliver? I'm talking about broken down walls. I'm talking about things in our life that are not working. And then we say, God, bless my business. God, bless my business. Bless everything I touch. Bless everything I touch. Cause me to prosper. Cause me to prosper. In everything that we do. In everything that we do. Listen. God can bless us for a season. But God cannot sustain blessing in our life. When in my business, I'm oppressing those that work for me. Oh, just stay up here, man, because then I'm going to have you minister. How do we live a protected life? Well, I'll go to church. Yes, it's important to go to church. Yes, it's important to read the word. Yes, it's important to know the word. Yes, it's important to pray. Yes, it's important to worship. Yes, it's important to do these things. Yesterday morning, I sat there and said, what? God. He said, Mary, the walls 
of my people's life. Hear this. This is a one thing. And it is a game changer. Because this is it. You hear me? He said the walls of our life are not in the word. The walls of our life are not in worship. The walls of our life are not in the giving. The walls of our life are worship, our prayer, consecration, giving. Those are the weapons of our life. All right, I'm going to say it again. Knowledge of the word is a weapon. When I know the word, I am armed and dangerous. My Bible says, let the high praises of God be upon your lips like a double-edged sword in your hands to execute vengeance on the enemy and punishment on the people. When I come in here and praise my God, I'm not doing it to feel good. I might feel good, but I don't praise because I feel good. I praise because it's a weapon against the enemy. And when I begin to praise him, and when I let high praise rise up out of me, the enemies that are coming against me, they buck up into my praise. When I give... So guys, this whole book about Nehemiah, the Lord begins to show me, and I'm going to prove it this one point in scripture. He says, Mary, the walls are not these things. He says, those are the weapons. But what the enemy is after is to disarm my people of the weapons. says, I break down the wall. That's what the enemy does. He breaks down the wall to get the weapon. All I want to do today is tell you what the wall is. Then we can begin this series at another level. So what he is after, Stephanie, where did he go? Come Barry, go in front. Stephanie, go behind your husband. Put your arms around your husband tight and grab onto Nick's neck. Tight. Tight. Barry, hold his hands. Yeah, man. Now try and kick. <laughs> now try and kick. Now try kick, Nick. Kick, Nick. When the enemy... Gets the weapon. He is defenseless. So now I'm coming at him. I'm coming at him. I'm coming at him. Come on, defend yourself. Um, you can't defend. How do we live a protected life? How do we live a life of protection in today's atmosphere? How do we live a life of protection? Guys, we are outnumbered. The global economic system is bigger than any bank account you can ever build. The World Health Organization is bigger than any medicine. Because it's a gender, it's not only medication. Our government has a military might. A hurricane is bigger than the walls in your house. An earthquake is bigger than the foundations of your house. Raquel! We can build, and we can build, and we can build, and in one day. Yes. 
I'm going to give you the key. Today. This is a power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it's the power of being part of a kingdom that is not of this world. Guys, if you want to fit into this world, you cannot be a Christian. Christians don't fit in. We were never created to fit in. So what's the wall? Let's go back to Jericho. Let's use a couple examples. But I'm just saying, Holy Spirit, I said, God. You see, some of us think the more we praise, though it is a weapon. The more we pray, though it is a weapon. The more word we know, though it is a weapon. If those things don't have the ingredient, I'm about to say, the weapon cow. It's useless. So God, read it in Deuteronomy. You can put it up on Deuteronomy's screen. He says to a group of his children that were out in the land. He says, you see that city, Jericho? You're going to take it. But can you say, there's nothing in my life that I can't take without an instruction from God. Well, I think you need to say that. You need to lift. Say, there's nothing. No, right now, just lift your hands. Say, there's nothing in my life that I cannot take without an instruction from God. There's nothing in my life that can defeat me when God has given me an instruction concerning that thing. There's no sickness that can take my life if God has given me an instruction. Well, I, I think you need to just engage him for one second. What is your battle today? What is your enemy trying to do in your life today? How was the enemy trying to break down the wall? So, this is what the Lord shows me. He says, Mary, the enemy is after the weapons on the inside that my people carry. So God says to Joshua, Joshua, you're going to take Jericho. Nehemiah, you're going to rebuild the wall. He says to Israel, in Deuteronomy, this wall is coming. Joshua, you're not going to fight with natural weapons. Joshua, you're going to tell all of Israel to be silent. And then Joshua, you're going to walk around Jericho seven times. What's a bunch of idiot? <laughs> no, seriously, think about it. Can you imagine? Big high wall, holy on the inside, giants all around, not one bit of ammunition, clothes from the desert, no shield, no spear, them a match. Gideon, you want to defeat the enemy? Gideon, get some jars of clay. Put some candles or lamps in the jars. Position yourself, Gideon, around the camp of the enemy. And then Gideon, when I say shout, Gideon, you go and shout. Can you imagine those warriors? Our Gideon, I say. Can you imagine? They were down there. They thought, let us get all our men. Because the enemy were outnumbered. Gideon said, no, I only need 300. I just need 300 men that are willing to do one thing. One thing.
go back to Deuteronomy. You see, you there, Josh? Deuteronomy 6. The wall of protection. You got it, Joshua? Deuteronomy 6, verse 4. I want you to see it in scripture. And these words, which I command you today, shall be in your hearts. Keep going. You shall teach them diligently to your children. You shall talk of them when you sit in the house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down, when you rise up. Keep going, Joshua. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be on frontlets between your eyes. Keep going. You shall write them on the doorstep of your house and on all your gates. Keep going. So it shall be. When the Lord your God. Get a drink. No, Deuteronomy 6 verse 1. Verse 1. We started at verse 4. I want to go back to verse 1. Now this is a commandment. And these are the judgments which the Lord your God has commanded to teach you. That's the wall. Then it what keeps us safe? What's going to keep your success safe? What's going to keep your marriage safe? What's going to keep our lives safe? Let's go back. Now this is a command. These are the statutes and judgments which the Lord your God has commanded to teach you. What comes next? That you may possess. Look at verse 3. Therefore hear, O Israel, and be careful. Whenever you see God repeat something in scripture, be careful to observe it, that it may be well with you and that you might multiply greatly as the Lord God of your fathers has promised you a land flowing with milk and honey. What is the repeated word? What's the repeated word? What's the repeated word, TCMI? What? 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 That you may know the word. That you may pray the word. That you may teach the word. This is how the Lord birthed it in my spirit. Yesterday morning, early, he said this. He said, Mary, it is knowledge unto obedience that is the wall. Men, I want you to come up here on stage. Every, I want you to stand here in the middle. Every one of you represent a weapon that God has given to us. Stand all bundled up in the middle. Stand all bundled up in the middle. Stand all bundled up in the middle. So come on, stand all bundled up. TCMI, I want you to just lift your right hand, man. We are armed and dangerous. 
Jimmy, I need you. Sean, I'm going to call you up here. I need a couple. I need a couple more men. Ella, come on up here. Oh, Christopher. Where's Christopher? Which Christopher we have to talk about? Come, Sean. Come, Sean. Come. Come. No, I don't need, I want you outside the wall. Outside the wall. Sean, come here. Come here, Roy. Come here. Come here. Jimmy, come here. Just come over this side. Come over this side. We're going to work from one side. Amen. God's protection in our life. The enemy is after the weapon. If there's no obedience, the weapon cannot work. Well, Joshua, I don't really think it's a good idea to march around the words of Jericho. Joshua said, God says to Joshua, Joshua, I didn't ask you. Well, Gideon, you know, God... Jars of clay, 300 men. Well, you know, God, I know you're a big God, but you are really a... You sure you know what you're doing, God? I actually think if I put them on that mountain, and on that mountain, and on that mountain, it would probably be better than putting them there, there, and there. And actually, the ones that you sent home are my strongest men. God says to Gideon, Gideon, I didn't ask you. Every act. This is what God said to me. I said to Pat, I said, Pat, God deal with me hard, you know. That's because he loved me wholly. Let me preach to my, uh, my life that I compromise. Well, God, I can't really afford to obey you there, you know, because I have other things going on. Forgive them. Rabba hasoto koto Forgive who? You must be mad, God. Teach them one lesson, God. Leo, correct your children. Teach them the ways of God. No matter what their opinion is. As long as I feed you and close you and house you, I'm going to raise you up in the way that you should go. Every time I say to God, I can't bother. Can't bother, give. Guys, listen. We don't tell God how we're going to worship him, you know. He tells us how we are to worship him. Well, God, I'll give you what I can. He said, I didn't ask you to give me what you can. Turn around. Every act of disobedience. Well, Mary, I want you to buy that building. Seriously, God? I'm going to build one cardboard building because I know why. He says, listen, the spiritual protection go through scripture from Genesis and I'm done to Revelation. Eve, don't eat the apple. Because in the day that you eat that which I have told you not to eat, you shall surely die. 
But God, he told me. My eyes. Don't let this. My eyes. Yeah, hold on. Let it go. I don't want to ruin anything. You're being broken. It was like this week the Lord was showing me. I can't move to next week without this revelation. Because if we want to rebuild, the only way to rebuild the walls of our life. You let me just talk plain for a second. I said it's bad. Right. I said bad. I just have to tell you. I said bad. I like to preach messages where everybody knows. I said bad. I can tell you I've been through a, another level of dealings of God in 2022. I told God I'm I'm trying to face this reality about God. And I've preached for over 30 years. I've served him. And I've given up my life. And I said, Pa, I feel like I want to find one mountain somewhere. All I want to go up in the mountain, I mean, I want to come down. I mean, I want to see nobody. I mean, I want to talk to nobody. I mean, I even want to preach. I don't want to do nothing. Because I realize God is awakening me to something. And what he's awakening me to, I think is going to provide the most powerful season of ministry ahead. But it's not something that can transact easily. This God that we serve, he's God. <laughs> My God, guys, we're not God. I mean, this God that we serve, He is God. He's not a government, He's not a system, He's not a church. messages. Look, he says this. If we don't get extra oil. <laughs> Stephanie, I'm here asking God to get my extra apartment rented. extra oil. Do you know how hard the devil works? If the devil is not lazy. No. 
He comes to steal, to kill. So if I don't get extra coin, not just dry out, Stephanie. It's not the message today, but Jaina Alcorn preached it. He said, if I don't get extra oil, when the trumpet sounds, the door, listen, guys, sorry, look at me. Confession of Jesus Christ at this altar is the beginning of salvation. entry point but the Bible tells us that if I do not if I do those things that I know I should not do and I continue to do the things that I know I should not do look at me he says there's no sack I tramp a foot the cross and my salvation is null and void. I said, my God, can I ask permission? Can I talk? I'm not worried about the global order. Enough time. In the last three months, I've said, I quit. I said, I'm done. I'm done. You ever felt like I quit? Nobody ever felt like that. I just said, God. I'm done. I've paid my price. I've done my laps. I've done my push-ups. Guess what, God? We have some good pastors here. I mean, time to hand over. God says, really? He says, and then what? Deuteronomy 6. If we know the word and we don't obey the word, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sin. No, hold on. But a fearful dread open eyes for one second. Let me ask you guys something. Because I'm a pastor and I love God. But can I tell you something? Obedience to him costs us. I only get a few clap off of you, you, you know why I say you need to clap? Because it's your amen to truth. say obedience to him costs us obedience to him costs us obedience to him costs us all right this is a very personal message maybe my family's watching but the walls of my family were broken down mother's fighting for her life with sepsis of the blood. She 
codes in the hospital. But there's a word over her life. The battle is so big in my life. I can't preach on Wednesdays because I'm in Kingsford. And God says, Mary, you're going to fight this battle with silence. I say, what God? He says, not one word of judgment, not one word of condemnation, not one word of confrontation. He says, you're going to be silent and stand still and see the salvation. You go in family meeting. One person come down in family meeting. In my face. All manner of things are said. There's some battles you don't have to defend yourself. Yeah. I'm going to leave with this. If we want spiritual protection, The only way to get it is to obey. Amen, amen. Guys, you can pull down this wall for one second. Just pull it down. All right. All right. All right. Can you just surround yourselves, men? All right, worship team, just play. Look what the Lord has done. Leon, can you come up here and get a mic? Come on, worship team, just play. Look what the Lord has done. Come on. Come on, come on. All right, men, you're going to dance. Dance. Everybody stand to your feet now. Leon, get a mic and come up here. Come on now, sing. Please. Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. Look what the Lord has done. One more time. Yeah. Look what tonight. the Lord has done. Yeah. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me just in time. For the praise His name. His name is just the same. Come on. Come on and praise Him. Look what the Lord has done. All right. I'm going to pray, Pastor Mark. All right, Phil. Next stand up right there in the middle of the rubble. Leon's a powerful. She's going to pray that God bend down, sir. Now you're going to pray that God will restore him. Sister. Father, we thank you. Don't put such a foot on the foot. Father, we thank you that you are the repair of the breach. Father, we thank you that you shall restore Nick soul, Father, we thank you that when the enemy comes up against us like a flood, your spirit has lifted up a standard against him. Father, over his soul, we lift up a standard. Over his emotion, we lift up a standard. Father, we thank you that the plan... I don't see nothing going on with Nick. 
Look at me. The restoration of the walls of our life. Because there are many people here and online this morning. Walls are broken down. This wall is broken down. That wall is broken down. Pat, pray for me. Phaon, pray for me. Listen. Phaon didn't break his wall down. What broke his wall down was his disobedience to God. Restoration. Oh, folks, come stand here. Elder, can you stand behind her? Opal, stand behind Opal. Face me, Opal. Can you stand behind her? Lift your hands. Restoration. When we're talking about restoration of God's protection in our life. Opal, be blessed. Get slain in the spirit, okay? Come on, get, get slain, get slain, get Mr. If it gets slain. Say hall say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Say glory, Opal. Pick her up, pick her up. Pick her up, pick her up. More God. <laughs> Pick her up, pick her up. Lord! The problem was she gave up her devotional life. You want to rebuild the wall? Go get a block. What you going to do tomorrow morning? Get up and do what? Nick, your wall got broken down because of some act of disobedience. Come off the wall. How are you going to rebuild it? How? I didn't give. I want to rebuild the wall. I didn't get my checkbook up. I decided to live an unconsecrated life. There are some people I got to cut out of my life. I decided to have a people in my heart. There are some people I need to forgive. I mean, really forgive. I told God I'd tip him, but he wants me to tithe. Got to write the check. Oh, I told him I was too busy and my devotional life would be in my car. And he told me to give me the first portion of his day. I've got to set my alarm earlier. He told me to bless those that curse me these blocks are really heavy. <laughs> Obedience is costly. And when I look upon my wife, I'm gonna love her no more. God tell me it's not about how you feel, it's about a covenant. I'm gonna love her right. When I think I'm smarter than my husband, it's not about my education. God says, I'm going to honor him, submit to him.
Let's lift our hands to the Lord. Father, this morning, I've given to your people what you gave to me. Father, obedience is what keeps us safe. Guys, there are times God has asked me to do things. <laughs> it's not a matter of make no sense. It's a matter of it's a way. My obedience is not about me. My obedience is because he's God. My obedience is not because I want a blessing. My obedience is because he is God. He is my God. I can sing and dance and pray my prayer. But without obedience, I am absolutely vulnerable to attack. Lift your hand. Yeah, man. So God talked to me last yesterday morning. He says, Mary, compromise is disobedience. If we are honest, holy for compromise in our life. your area of obedience? What's been your area of disobedience? Honestly, guys, I don't have nothing else to say. All I know Nick I can't afford to live in this generation with broken down walls So I don't know about anybody else, but concerning TCMI, and concerning this house, and concerning my house, let's rise up and build. This is no hype message. Father, not my will. what obedience looks like I didn't want to preach today Apostle Gardner is in Jamaica he's preaching on Wednesday he'll be here Apostle Gardner is here. he's if you want me to come preach tomorrow because I don't have COVID I've tested like four times but I'm recovering from a flu 
God says, that, no, Apostle Linda Gardner is not to preach this morning. I didn't want to preach. I'm dosed up. He said, Mary, you're going to do what I told you to do. Whether you feel like it or not. Amen, amen. Apostle Gardner can come on Wednesday. But for Sunday, he can do the word. Amen. But God, does it really matter one service? Don't you understand? My mom's here. I'm tired. I'm sick. No, Mary, it's really not about you. Yeah. Hate to tell you, girl, I love you, but. <laughs> love you, Mayor. Consider how you feel, yeah. But really and truly, it's about me, sweetie. You're going to obey me. Because if you want to be safe. So last week I tithed. He said, tithe again this week. Okay, God, no problem. Whatever you say, God. Because I realize that God ain't no obi a man. Maybe somebody else can close. I am reckoning as somebody in full-time ministry for 30 years that God does not exist to give me what I want in my life. I exist to give him what he wants. And you know, I have a funny feeling that all those things I've wanted, I just have a funny feeling, Fionn, that all those things I've wanted and all those things I've been trying to get to a compromise. I don't want to offend anybody, Lord, so I'm not going to confront them. Really? Ugh. That all those things, he says he'll give me exceedingly. Above. And beyond. I have a funny feeling. You know, Pastor Chris, you wake up in the morning and or, you know, I won't say, you know, you roll over in bed in the morning and you look at your husband or your wife, you say, Lord God, I didn't sign up for this. And the single people said, Amen. Throughout the day, you know, you're saying, Lord, help me to love her. Help me to love her. Help me to love him. Help me to love him. And God says, listen here. This is how the kingdom works. He says, you're waiting for feeling to obey. He says, roll over. Where's your wife? Where's your wife? She's here? She's the whole moon. Where's your wife? Nick, Nick's wife come. She's pretty subtle. Amen, amen, amen. Come, come beside your husband. Amen. And he says, Nick, don't wait for the feeling to obey. Don't wait for the job increase to tithe. Don't wait for COVID to go to come to church. Amen. He says, just roll over, hug her, and lay one on her. 
and lay one on her. And lay one on her. Come on, hug her, hug her. Hug her, hug her, hug her. Hug up. It's not a sin. They're married. He says, listen. When your baby, guess what God does? That which was not there. He puts there. Andre, go hug your wife. Go hold her. Everybody whose wives are here, get next to your husband and wife this morning. Couples, get together. Pastor Mark, Green Knight, her cup here. Estes. Married couples. There you go, woman. Barry and Stephanie. Married couples get beside each other. Pastor Rodcliffe, get your wife. Hold them tight. This couple is something else. Everybody else lift your hands to the Lord. Come on, let's just worship Dante King and Robert. Hug her up, Robert. Hug him up, Dante King. Trudy and Glenn, stand up. Hug her up, Glenn. Come on, wrap your arms around about your spouse. This is your gift from God. Come on, Nats. I want us just to worship. Because I just believe that the Holy Spirit is speaking to people. He's saying, pick up that brick. Pick up that thing that I've called you to do and just do it. Amen. Father, this morning, obedience to you. Father, you said that if we love you, we will obey you. Father, your love language is obedience. Father, the proof of our love is obedience to you. And Lord, in this series, Father, you're saying to us, Whatever area is out of line, do the work of obedience. Let's lift our hands and worship him this morning. On fight is with weapons on sea. Your enemies crash to their knees as we rise up in worship. Giving is an act of obedience. What hell meant to break me 
there. Every area of my life where the walls have been broken now. Father, this morning, I ask you to give me grace to rise up and to build through obedience. Thank you, God, for the grace. I just believe very quietly that God is speaking to hearts right across this congregation, those that are online and outside. Just in this moment, I believe the Holy Spirit is saying this area, this area, this area, this area, Mary, this area. Give me your obedience here. Give me your obedience here. <clears throat> Give me your obedience here. <laughs> and I believe this morning that if you've received this word from God, that he's going to give you the grace to rebuild walls of protection around your life, around your finances, around your marriages, around your children, around your health. Father, this morning, I ask that this house, Lord, what good is a stone that's broken? Father, I ask that this word today, that this week you would release grace. joy and strength to rise up and to rebuild areas in our life that we've allowed to be broken down in Jesus name for me let us come and give this morning let's come to the altar with our offerings and let's give it this morning in faith Again, again